Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our presentation. I am Josephine, and my partner is Wang Jiali. Today, the topic of our presentation is a report on translation practice of Ibsen's drama, A Doll's House, from the perspective of Scopus theory. So first, I will introduce our presentation. It contains three parts. The first is the introduction, then it's the translation analysis. The third part is work cited. So first, I will introduce Ibsen for you. Um, Ibsen, whose full name was Henry Jorma Ibsen, was a pro pro prominent Norwegian dramatist. On March 1828, Ibsen was born in a wealthy family in a Norwegian town called Skien, which provided the objective conditions for Ibsen's childhood exposure to the European upper class. At the age of 16, he was forced by his father to work as a apprentice in a small pharmacy. During the three years in the pharmacy, Ibsen, while busy with his work, found time to read <coughs> varieties of books and taught himself jig. This laid foundation for his later work. 1850 was an important turning point for Ibsen. He accumulated experience for his drama creation and accumulated audience for the proponents of his plays. Ibsen's early plays were in the form of poetry while the middle and the late plays were mainly in prose, but the main content was social criticism and humanic spirit. His work include Cutty Line, The Vikings at Hangland, Love's Comedy, and a Peer Guide. Verses on the mouth, the inner volume to any thinking social questions, advocating self-oriented. However, in the European society at that time, Ibsen was attacked by the conservative conservative forces of the European society at that time to the upper society of these works in order to make his creation more close to life so that readers can be immersed in the scenes. He jumped out of the bondage of poetic drama format and used prose drama to create more abandoned roles and <coughs> plots. Between 1997 and <coughs> 1981, Ibsen's three stage plays Pillars of Society, A Doll's House, and Ghosts represented the three stages of his social and historical drama creation. Ibsen, while rapidly developing his dramatic skills, also mastered the realistic method of writing. He had a keen perspective of the European society and revealed the European social problems intuitively and successfully in the form of prose, which has a milestone significance in the history of modern drama and he is known as the father of the modern drama. The main reason is that he has a significant contribution to the innovation of the world drama, and he influenced the world's famous playwrights, such as George Bernard Shaw in the United Kingdom and Tao Yu in China. His plays were introduced to China during the May Force movement and aroused great repercussions. The article is based on Ibsen's famous prose play, A Doll's House. And then I'll introduce um, A Doll's House for you. A Doll's House is a three-act drama which tells the emotional changes between the Harani, Nora, and her husband, Helmer. From the beginning of all abundance and dependence on her husband to the end of breaking with, up with his, her husband, Nora realized herself awakening. And Nora's family was a micro, microscopist of the European middle class at that time. Eva is a more idealized family. Norma is an independent wife. Simply her daily life is to take care of the children, please her husband. Helmer is the husband, the head of the family who controls the family finances and the right to speak. And Eva plays the role of parents who educate Nora. However, the role of the two is not natural. The arrives of Mrs. Lind <coughs> lets Nora reveal a shocking secret. In the case of her husband's serious use and poor family, the seemingly unworthy Nora forged her husband's signature to the husband bank colleague, Cross Jestart, to borrow money, thus to save her husband's life. She had been hiding this from her husband and had done some odd jobs by herself to pay off her debts in the installments. In a society where reputation is more important than anything else, incidents such as forging a signature are enough to dis discredit a person in order to save the bank's job, Cross, Cross Gastard blackmailed Nora and wrote a letter to Helmer. In the end, 
Professor K was reporting behavior under the persuasion of his old lover, Mrs. Lin. But Mrs. Lin saw that Nora and Helmer should be honest with each other and did not take care take back the letter. The third act is a climax of the play. As a result of this letter, Helmer and Nora ended having a heat conversation. <clears throat> Helmer knows that Nora assumed the name of that. His ugliness and selfish explodes. He did not behave as what he said in everyday life. When in trouble as Nora's protector, but used every way to accuse Nora, who seemed to have been at a loss, and after learning that matter will not be exposed, Helmer immediately changed his attitude. As Yura began to coax Nora, Nora had been prepared to commit suicide to save her husband's honor, but after this incident, he sudden, she suddenly realized she decided to stop being a passive dog and learn to be a real person. Eventually, the show ends with Nora running away from the house. One of the innovations of Ibsen's play is that he uses discussions of characters to reveal problems and reflect the major issues in the life of, of European bourgeoisie. The dialogue in a doll's house is very refreshing and thought-provoking. In particular, the some of Nora's words in the third act are full of cover of feminist in rebe rebe rebellion against traditional ethic. She believes that before becoming a mother and a wife, she must become a person who can think independently. Thus, it can undergo a series of transformations from self-awakening to self-salvation, and so on. And now I will introduce the language of drama. Drama is a special kind of literature form which has both the particularity of drama literature and the commonness of literature works. Western drama literature started at an early time. It's a catchy and can fully express the author's feeling through the language of art interpretation. The language style is mainly oral and has very local characteristics. If a drama work wants to be successful, successful, it must first be a model of the use of language. Since the drama needs to be actually performed on a stage, its, con it's content needed to be catchy and full convey the ideas that drama needs to convey in a very short time. Dramatic literature is also very different from traditional literature in that it uses more colloquial language, but it is different from daily language. It is a form of language expression which summarizes through the artistic proceeding and careful refinement of various rhetorical devices by the authors and has artistic interests and aesthetic charm. Traditional literature uses a variety of ways to dispatch <coughs> characters, either through the description of the clothes and appearance or through the rending of environment senses. There are many dis descriptive means that can be used. While dramatic literature in the characterization of characters, the method is relatively simple, can only be reflected through the lines of language. In the creation of dramatic literature, the author usually uses a large number of lines to reflect the character's personality. For each character created, the content of the lines can be reflected in the character's gender, age, identity, experience, and social background. Through the content of this line, the personality and thoughts of characters can be reflected, thus is fully de depicting the character's characteristics. Dramatic language also uses verbs to to describe and express the actions of the characters and explaining the meaning of the expression of the, of the actions. According to the characteristic of the characters, special actions can be designed to depict the characters' characters. Meanwhile, through the description of these actions, characters can be deeply depicted and their inner activities and action intentions can be expressed. Um, the last part is the introduction of the a translation of drama. In the West, drama is a literary art with a long history. Under the influence of Western drama, China has also formed a drum, formed drum with Chinese characteristics, and a number of high-quality drama has been born. In sense, drama is a kind of culture, a kind of art, but also a kind of actors in front of the audience to perform and resonate the art. At present, there are many problems in the field of drama translation. Because the essence of drama determines that drama has the dual characteristic of literature and performance, but also determines that the translation of drama must be able to take into account these two aspects, which put forward strict requirements of translators. 
Translation theorist Peter Newmark pointed out that serving the stage performance should be the main purpose of dramatic translation. The translated language should be conscious, colloquial, and reflect the meaning of the play. In addition, Susan Busnett also pointed that the translator should be considered the language to, you, to, to be used for the stage, so the translation must be easy to speak, easy to read, and easy for the audience to understand. <clears throat> to sum up, foreign translators pointed out that language effects must be taken into account in drama translation. Yin Rou Chen has made the more, most research on drama translation in China academic area. He has made a compre comprehensive and profound thinking on the drama translation and has formed his own rich and equal theory and method of drama translation. In the perspective, uh, in drama translation, we must first consider the simplicity and colloquial language, consider the direct effect on the stage and try to ensure that translator audience can get the same spiritual renaissance as the source language and the audience. In the process of translation, he advocates multi-party opera <coughs> operation. So now I will welcome my partner Dali to uh, introduce the other parts of our presentation. Time to give you a pre uh, presentation. And first is the introduction to the scope theory. I think everyone know a, bit, a little of it, or know about it, but I sh continue to introduce it to you. The term scope is often used to refer to the purpose of the translation, and it's derived from the Greek word from purpose scope. In addition to scope, when Vermeer also used the related terms aim, purpose, intention, and function in order to write conceptual confused not propose the physical distinction between intention and function. Intention is defined from the sender's point of view, where function refers to the textual function, which is defined by the combination of the receiver's expectation needs. No, uh, no knowledge and environmental condition. And in when mayor scope, the zero family, one of the most important facts determine is purpose of a translation in audience. The recent page who to translation is intent, who have their own culture background, knowledge, expectations of the translation text and the communicative needs. Every translation is direct to the certain audience and therefore a translation is a discourse produced for the purpose and target audience in a target language situation. But Miller believes that the original text is only a source of partial or total information for the target audience. The status of the original text in scope is significantly lower than its students in receptivity. Scope theory is the theory that applies the concept for of scope to translation, and its core concept is that the most important factor in the translation process is the purpose of the overall act of translation. And next is the emergence and the development. And the functionalist translation theory emerged in Germany in 1970s. Uh, and the first step is Rice first introduced the category of function into the translation criticism. Link, linguistic function, discourse type and translation strategy and developed a model of translation criticism based on the function you know, relationship between thought text and translation. Thus, presenting uh, the prototype of a function in the theoretic, uh, theoretical source. Rice believes that the idea of translation thought should be comprehensive, community, communicative translation. It should be equivalent to the original text in terms of conceptual context in linguistic realm and the communicative function. But what should be prioritized the in practice is the functional features of the translated text. And uh, now we add the second step. The mayor proposed the scope theory, a theory which freed the translation studies from the shackles of the original 
concentrate these, as are this theory considered translation as a pur purposeful and faithful act based on the original text, an act, act which must be accomplished through negotiation, negotiation and translation, must follow a series of rules of which the rule of purpose is at the forefront. In other words, translation depends on the purpose of translation. In addition, translation must follow the rule of the intro linguistic uh, coherence and the rule of the interlinguistic coherence. The former means that the translation must be internally coherent and understandable to the receivers of the translation, while the latter means there should be coherence between the translation and the original text. And with the introduction of this uh, three principles, translation are no longer judged by the criteria, criteria of equivalence, but by the adequacy of the translated text in achieving the intended goal. But Mir also put forward the concept of the translation commission. Um, we can see the translation commission, and the thought is the translator should decide whether, when, and how to complete the translation text. So in the real world when you need to translate something, I think the first time you should ask the translation commission. And in other words, the translator should adopt the appropriate translation strategies according to a different translation purpose and has the right to decide what can be retained and what needs to be adjusted or modified according to the translation purpose. According to the mayor, the prime rule of the translation should be the rule of purpose. In other words, the purpose of translation demands the strategies and method of translation. And we come to the third part, the third step. Drawing on communicative and the behavioral theories, Holmes proposed the behavioral theories of the translation which further developed the, the functionalist theory of translation. The theory of translation as a purpose-driving result oriented, oriented human interaction. This theory has much in common with the scope theory and the Vermeer later interprets the two. And we will, at the last step, uh, know that a comprehensive summary and a perfection of the functionalist theory for the first time in English, not systematically explains the internal and external factor to be considered in text analyzed in translation and how to formulate uh, the translation strategy that suits the purpose of translation on the base of the function of the original text. Not comprehensive the various doctrine, doctrines of the functionalist and purpose that translator should follow the guiding principle of function plus loyalty uh, that perfecting the theory. And then we go to the rule. Okay. Uh, we can say the rule, the first is scope rule, the rule of the act of translation determines the whole process of translation. And we can see he uh, divided into three categories. The first is the basic purpose of translation, and the second is the communicative uh, purpose of the translation. The third is the purpose to be achieved by the rules of a particular beings of translation. However, purpose refers to the communicative purpose of the translation text. And uh, this is a sentence from these people, and we can see is that the community function of the translated uh, text for the readers of the important, important language in the social cultural context of the import language. And therefore, the translator should identify and that it is a specific purpose of a given translation in the context of the translation and decide on the method of the translation. And okay, we can see the, the second rule is a coherence rule. And it means that the translated text must meet the transcendent of the internal text coherence. The translated text is readable and acceptable and can be understand, understood by the receivers and make things in the culture of the language into which is translated as well as in the communicative context in which it is used. And uh, the last rule is the fidelity rule. The fidelity rule means that there should be internal textual coherence between the original text and the translated text. This is equivalent to what other translation theories called 
adapted to the original text, but uh, the degree and form of the fidelity to the original text depends on the purpose of the translation and the translation, the translator's understanding of the original text. And now it's our translation analysis. And before we begin analysis, we, this is our outline. And first we can say drama is an art of language and the speech. And the dramatic effect should be shown to the audience to the maximum extent. In, all, uh, in addition to the performance of the actor themselves, the presentation of the drama, uh, dramatic language effect is also a crucial aspect. In the process of translation, how to pre preserve the language art of the original play has become a problem that translators uh, should pay attention to. Combining the pre were uh, sections of the translation series theoristic on drama translation, we conclude uh, the following. And first, is in order to show uh, to show the language art of the original play to maximum extent in the process of translation, it is necessary to pay attention to the action of the dramatic language. And the dramatic language should show the texture of the characters uh, from the translation of the cultural work. It should be need for the target audience to understand which ret uh, retaining its linguistic effect and the language of drama should be concise and uh, colloquial. And uh, the next is our uh, some research, according to our research, we can see the about uh, example of translation, of Chinese translation of uh, a doll's house. And uh, we can see that the most of translation methods are used free translation and the literary translation. Okay, this our uh, some examples. The first uh, is the rhetorical example. Uh, is uh, we can see we can highlight bird, bird and sky luck. Uh, we can see uh,小鸟儿,小鸟儿,以及小百灵鸟儿。Um,this is our analyze. Let me see, uh, that Chong Ben Chong Ar Pa Yin Chu Yo, Hyo Chong Ben 观众或者听者听出来有一种小细轻弱的感觉，呃，例如普通皮筋儿这些听大家都会听到之后就感觉它是那种小啊，或者细或者轻，特别弱的。然后functionally they are also associated with the psychological of 喜爱还有喜欢，就是当你听到耳发音之后，你就会觉得这个人对于你的，你听到这个词，他是。给你产生感觉是一种喜爱和喜欢的感觉，嗯，such as 小偷儿、小孩儿，and we know the brown dictionary that log is usually translated as 云雀或者百灵鸟，但是 according to the rule of the scope that the rule of faithfulness, uh, it can be translated as 小鸟。就是根据穆迪论的呃呃原则的话，其实它可以是直接翻译成小鸟的，但是我们选择将它呃翻译成了小鸟儿。原因是, uh, company with the linguistic features of Chinese in the dialogue context, the translation of bird and sky lark will be treated as 小鸟, uh, reflect, uh, Reflecting the Tofa's intimacy with Nola and letting the audience feel guilty of their, their, martial, uh, their martial life, this kind of generalized translation is not only Live with the colloquial from of the expression in dramatic literature, but also live with the domestic audience culture background and daily communication. And it's our short known as little and doll as a woman, uh, which contracted with the plot development of Nola's awakening later on. And the second, we the 经常是因为说话嘛，所以他可能更偏重于自己，偏重的语言是口语化。因此，我们可以看到， we translate this sentence, uh, into 正因为你自己没办法，所以我格外爱你。要不然我还算什么男子汉大丈夫？
，如果我们采取直接的方法的话，我们会以为，如果不是这种女人的无助，让你在我眼里有了双重的吸引力，我就不会是一个男人了。但大家在话剧里。就是平时读戏的话也感觉怪怪的。如果在话剧舞台上演的话，如果一个演员进行这样表述的话，其实对于观众来说听起来是比较困惑的。所以，嗯 ，This is obviously not in line with the spoken language of drama. Dramatic literature has special characteristic of stage performance, which needs to pay attention to character image and plot development and consider. Completing the dialogue and the mono mono skill within the performance time, and its language especially has the characteristics of the clunkier. It's all it is constant, constant and fluency, catchy and has the characteristic of a performativity and enjoyability. And besides, uh, based on the rule of coherence in scope theory. The translation of the sentence adopts the method of paraphrase, which read. 因此，就是遵于目的论的那种连贯原则，我们选择将这句话采取了意义的方法，就把它译为：这因为你自己没办法，所以我格外爱你。要不然，我还算什么男子汉大丈夫？这么读起来，它是逐渐比较连贯的。其次，在观众呃观看话剧的时候，呃听到的话，他也是比较清楚、明了，知道演员在讲什么。Or from from some words with obvious meaning, the author does not seek to direct translation, but makes the colloquial expression of them. 就是在翻译这篇呃，在翻这句话的时候，我们并没有去直呃局限于采取直译，而是进行了口语化的表达。So the hidden meaning of the man, uh, is revealed as 大丈夫男子汉 which is translated as the 大丈夫男子汉 It shows the machismo. Mm-hmm. Uh, of the meaning character Topa, which not only achieves the purpose of concise um, and fluent language in the limited performance time, but, but also has a performativity and enjoyable to the audience feel the character of Topa more intuitively. Uh, if this woman helpless does not just give you a thought attractive, that, uh, in my eyes, that can see this sentence. This sentence 读起来是很怪的，然后因此我们也是采用意意义的方法把它译为：正因为你自己没办法，所以我格外爱你。This is direct and clean in in detection. The Topa thinks Noah is incapable of solving solving the problem of the receptive, and that Noah is weak and helpless, and it is this kind of door that makes Topa more fond of her. So as to show his 男子汉，呃，去展示他男子汉大丈夫的一面。嗯，呃，第五句呢，呃，第五，这是我们的 the five example， 呃 ，the fifth example。哦，我看见，我们把它归译的翻译方法是 local characteristic， 就是当将一个国外的文本去引进国内时候，为了方便观众更好去接受这个东西，呃，接受这个文化，接受这个剧本，嗯。通过目的论，我们可以知道，可以译者进行一些呃译者操作，去进行一些本地化，让这个有这个背景的人以及本地当地人更好去接受这个外来的文化。所以我们可以看一下，我们把呃剧本的前面的舞台描写进行了翻译，采用了中国特有的呃字词的表达方式，所以我们翻译成了。心烦意乱的瞎摸，抓起哈尔茂的舞衣披在自己身上，急急忙忙，哑子嗓嗓子断断续续的，低低声自言自语。哦、uh, ，since， 呃，这种呃 ，since theory is ultimately a genre of literature, it is still important to pay attention to the literary character of the language when translating it. According to the scope theory, the first principle of all translation. Activities is the principle of purpose. That is to say, the translation should be able to work in the context and culture of the target language, and in the way expected by the receivers of target language. The target language of this translation is is Chinese, and the Chinese literature focuses on beautiful language, making good use of the four-letter words and the idioms, so as to convey deep meaning of the emotion with just a few words. Therefore, the translator considers that the linguistic characters of the target language should be incorporated into the translation activity, 
So some words in the source language are translated into idiom uniquely to the type's language. And uh, we can see, according to the translation, we can see that distracted is translated as unequivocal, and quick is translated as muddled, spasmodic is translated as whisper, and whisper is translated as the use of the four categories was a unique form of the Chinese language. And it describes more or less the anxiety, which is when towards impending letter in mailbox, as well as more or less fearful and overwhelmed demeanor and action in the symbol of the clear language. The art language not only makes it catchy, for the reader, but also brings the image and character scribes in the play to life. Translation into four letter words will also make the play more in line with the expectation of the receivers of the import language and better accepted by, accepted by the culture of it, the import language. 给予观众的想象是非常好的，就是在有限时间内去经过这些简简短进入语言，对当时的情景进行描写的话，嗯，当观众听到这样的描述，它其实是有一个想象空间，因此我们采取了四字词的呃翻译，就是提高了语言的经